Welcome everybody. I'm Helga Hornis, Manager for Intelligent Systems at Pepper and Fuchs. Today I would like to show you the pretty amazing G10 safety module. The goal of this development was to simplify safety installations as much as possible by adhering to a strict less is better approach. For years customers asked us to reduce the size of safety modules to further increase installation flexibility while at the same time reducing cost in terms of time and material. And this is the result. A tiny single piece safety module with redundant safe inputs and a non-safe output. Let me show you how easy it is to use this module to connect e-stops or door switches and then use the output to drive an enunciating LED. Let's start by connecting a conventional safe e-stop to the module. This four conductor pigtail cable contains the four leads for the redundant safe inputs in the G10 module. Brown and blue go to one contact, white and black to the other. With the input leads connected, simply close the e-stop and you're done. It is no problem if your application requires a different safety device. Any dry contact safety device, like this door switch, can be used. The second pigtail cable contains the non-safe output leads. Brown is plus 24 volt DC and blue is the signal common. I will use this stack light with a red LED cluster to enunciate when the e-stop is pressed in. If your e-stop has integrated illumination, use this version of the G10 safety module. In this case, the leads for the safe inputs and the non-safe output run in the same pigtail cable. Otherwise, the two modules are identical. Next, I will assign an address to the module. Let's say address 2. To keep the size of the module as small as possible, we decided against an addressing jack. Instead, just press the module onto this addressing cable and use the AS interface handheld as usual. There is no need to screw close the G10 safety module. With the address assigned, the G10 module is operational and can be added to the network. Nothing is easier than that. After opening the housing top, the AS interface cable is inserted in the top tray. The bottom tray is there in case the installation uses aux cable and makes installation convenient. Note that the aux cable is not needed and is not pierced. Not inserting the aux cable does not impact the IP rating of the module. After closing the central mounting screw, the module is up and running and ready to be used in your IP67 installation. Let me show you how to use the G10 module in an actual setup. I will be using a safety controller with AS interface power supply, the G10 module with e-stop and LED indicator, and a non-safe illuminated push button to reset the e-stop once it has been released. To configure the safety controller to use the G10 safety module, start the Simon Plus software and click on the Start Assistant to start a new configuration. We will be using G10 Safety with Reset as the configuration title, but anything else would certainly work too. The status bar on the bottom right is red, indicating that the communication interface has not been set up properly. Clicking on the interface button opens this window. The safety controller we are using this time has a USB interface. Select USB and note that the USB ID will show up. Then accept the settings. On the bus information screen, select the search function. This will go out and find all modules currently connected to the network. Depending on the situation, the following messages may pop up. Should the integrated AS interface master be activated? Because we are using the safety controller to build a standalone system, there is no gateway on the network. It is therefore necessary to activate the integrated master. In cases where a gateway is being used, the master is going to enable communication and this confirmation window will not pop up. Do you want to call ACT to project the current AS interface circuit? 
ACT stands for ASI Control Tools, a visualization program showing the connected network modules. Let's not do this now. Should the gateway be switched to config mode? Since we are not done with configuring the network, it is not too surprising that we have a configuration error. For now, let's not switch to configuration mode. After scanning the network, the two connected modules have been found. Because Safety at Work requires a network with at least five slaves, but our network only contains two modules, we need to click on the Diagnostic Service tab and add additional slaves. I am assigning address 28 as the base address and then select three simulated slave addresses. Having done that, the safety controller will occupy addresses 28 to 31 on the network. With the two modules, this will give us the required five or more slaves. The last basic setup step deactivates operation without ASI power supply. Now we are ready to define the safe logic. Let's start by dropping the stop category zero output device onto the processing window. Note that we want to activate the enunciation LED connected to the G10 safety module when the motor is not running. This means that output zero on the J10 safety module with address two must be selected. The inverted checkbox must be selected or the LED would be on when the motor is on. Next, we add a monitored start with standard slave. Rename it to reset green button and then select the module and bit address of the green button on the push button module. 1A with input bit in 3. Now it is time to add the e-stop. As with all such mechanical devices, it is best to configure them as dependent with filtering. The default times for synchronization and stabilizing time are appropriate for the vast majority of safe input devices. Since our network has just one safety module, the address box already contains the correct address. When you set up a network with many modules, make sure you select the correct address for the safety device. This completes the setup of the logic that will control OSSD1 and thus the motor. Because we're using an illuminated push button module to restart the safe output, it is quite easy to help the operator even more by setting up logic such that the green restart button is flashing when the e-stop is pulled out but has not been restarted. For this we need a new processing window with a stop category zero output device. The OSSD assignment is not that important but it is good practice to do this non-safe operation using an OSSD that cannot control a safe output. On this safety controller, OSSD 9 and higher can only be used for such diagnostic operations. The output we're going to control is the green LED on the illuminated push button. Per the data sheet for this module, this means the logic must point to address 1A, output 1. Add an automatic start. The flash block generates the desired flashing operation. Since we want the LED to flash only when the e-stop is released but the motor is not running, we must look at both the e-stop and the state of output 1. Selecting the inverted is necessary to inhibit flashing once the motor is running. It is always a good idea to use the configuration checker to make sure the configuration is free of errors. Next, the configuration can be downloaded to the safety controller. Selecting yes on this screen instructs the safety controller to observe the safe code sequence from the connected safety devices. If one or more safety devices are not in the release state, the sequential teach window pops up. Because the e-stop connected to the G10 safety module is depressed, the safety code of the G10 safety module is not sent and thus not observed. Pulling out the e-stop releases it, which results in safety codes being sent. This finishes the teach operation. Now the safety configuration log file is uploaded. It can be reviewed 
and is frequently used during the customer buy-off of the machine. Validation is the process of electronically signing off. The name of the person and the safety controller password are entered. The operation is time-stamped and a copy of the configuration file can always be uploaded from the safety controller. With a successful validation, the protective operation of the safety controller can be activated. Close the updated configuration log file to see the diagnostics window. This allows you to verify the safe logic for OSSD1, controlling the motor and non-safe output on the G10 safety module connected to the red stack light, and OSSD9, the non-safe logic for the green push button. Currently, the e-stop is in the release state, but the reset button must still be pushed to activate the safe output. While the system has not been restarted, OSSD9 is flashing, which in turn causes the green push button LED to flash. Pressing the reset button starts OSSD1 and deactivates by means of the state of output switching element 1 function block, the green push button LED. Depressing the e-stop deactivates OSSD1 and thus the motor. As you can also see, the logic for OSSD9 keeps the green push button LED off at this point. Pulling out the e-stop gets OSSD1 into the ready state, where the red stack light LED is again off, and the green push button LED is flashing. Pressing the green push button LED reactivates OSSD1, turning on the motor, turning off the G10 output, and therefore the red stack light LED. This also turns off the green push button LED. Let's see how this looks on the actual hardware. We're starting in a state where the e-stop is released and the safe output is on. This is indicated by the green LED cluster. Pushing the e-stop deactivates the safe output and the red stack light comes on. Pulling the e-stop into the release state does not immediately activate the safe output. Instead, the green push button LED is flashing, indicating that the button needs to be pushed next. After pushing the green button, the safe output is turned on, the button LED is off, and the red stack light is also off. If you like, you can download the configuration file we used here from our website. The link is listed in the notes section below this video.